Um, hello, so today we are going to do this problem, which is part of Fleet Code Daily Challenge, amount of time of binary tree for binary tree to be infected. So basically we have a binary tree where we have unique values, um, and we have a start, which is an integer value that represents the value of the node we start at. And we start at a minute zero, and then we start what's called an infection from a node, where each minute a node becomes infected if it's currently not infected um, and if it has an adjacent node that is infected. What do they mean by that? So basically, for example, if we take a look um, here at this node 3, uh, this is at minute 0 because this is the starting node. And so at minute 1, all the neighbors get infected. So this one gets infected. This is at the next minute, so minute 1 this one gets infected and then this one gets infected because it's a neighbor because it's a parent so the parent is considered a neighbor and the goal basically is to return the number of minutes for the entire tree to be infected and so for example in this specific case minute two the neighbors of one get infected and the neighbors of these but they don't have any more um, and so at minute two this one becomes infected at minute three this one becomes infected um, and then at minute four, the neighbors here both become infected. And so the overall number of minutes needed is four. Okay, so that's the idea. Now, how do we solve this? Well, the, the fact, the thing is, because we need the parent to be considered a neighbor uh, for the tree, we can't really do just a simple tree traversal. We would have to do, to convert this into to a graph so that it's easy to process just the neighbors. And by neighbors, we would consider both the parent and children. And so we can just construct um, an indirected graph because, because here one has as a neighbor three, but three also has it as a neighbor uh, one. Because if we start from one, we would want three to be infected at minute one. And if we start at three, we want one to be inf infected at minute one. Okay? So we need to create a graph um, out of this tree, um, an indirected graph. And then once we do that, it's really easy to count the number of minutes because we can just, at each minute, propagate to the next level, right? And then we can just take the max, and for each level where we go next, we can just increment the number of minutes by one, and then at the end, we just return the max. And that's really easy with BFS on a graph, and so let's just implement that. So first, we will need to do um, a graph, so, um, create our graph, so let's just define it as... Um, it's really easy. The it's really easy to define it as just a dictionary with a default value of list because each node will have a list of neighbors, and now we would have our DFS that let's create our graph. It starts at a node, but of course we would want our graph. We would want to create it starting at the root here, um, and now what do we do? Well, for each node, if if there is a left child, we want the left child to be neighbor of the node, and we want the node to be, uh, uh, so a left child neighbor of the node, and the node to be neighbor for the left child, right? Um, because this is an indirected graph. And same thing for the right node. And so that's what we'll do here. Uh, but we want to do that only if it actually exists. If it's empty, then we do, it doesn't make sense. And so only if node left exists, then we'll say graph, at node and we'll append node.left and we do a similar thing but here putting the nodes is use is not really uh, useful because the nodes value are unique and we will want to also start from the start point and the start point is the value of the node so we actually need to put the values they are unique so there will be no problem there for the graph uh, key and values to be unique but also it would be easy to process because we can start just at the value of start, right? We don't have to traverse to find the node, okay? And so um, in that case, we can just have the value here and do a similar thing, except here this would be node daval and this would be da left because again, undirected graph. We do the same thing for the right side. Um, we'll just have to modify this to be right. Same thing here, same thing here. And then we will recurse, of course, on the left child because, for example, here, um, let's say at the root node, we'll say, okay, now one has a neighbor three, three has a neighbor one, five has a neighbor one, and one has a neighbor five. But we shouldn't stop there. We have to go also to the left side and the right side so that we can mark 
neighbor of 4 is 9, and neighbor of 9 is 4. Um, and same thing here, neighbor of 3 is 10, and neighbor of 10 is 3, same with for 6 and 2, right? So we'd have to recurse for the left side and the right side. So to do that, we'll just do DFS of node.left, and we'll do recurse also on the right. You could place this, if you want, you can place this here, you could place this here. Um, it doesn't matter really where you place it, um, as long as you, tra you do traverse it. Okay, so once we do that, um, now we can just start our BFS solution. So BFS, we need a DQ, um, and it needs to have the starting node, and so we have the value already, and the number of minutes. So the state here is going to be the node and minutes, the number of minutes, okay? And now we will go through our BFS just structure. Um, we also need a visited set, so we'll need to have a visited set here so that we don't visit the same node twice. And we will just pop from the front. That's just be a BFS template. Now, with BFS, you could use a list and do level by level, but it's just easier to just use one data structure for a DQ and just add from, add from the rear and uh, pop from the front. Um, that way you process basically um, the first in, first in first, right? Um, because that's what we want. We want to process it in an order where um, we, for a node, we process immediately its children and its parent. And then for the next node, we do the same thing, okay? So here we'd have the node and the number of minutes. We also need to tr keep track of the max number of minutes. So let's call it just last minute. And so that's what we need to do here. It's going to be the max so far of last minute and minute. And this is what we return at the end. And now we can just go through the neighbors. So for each node, the neighbors are in the graphs. And so we can just get the neighbors. We need to check that it's not visited. And if it's not, we can add it to our queue so that we can our DQ so that we can process it. Now, remember, each time we visit um, a node, we will need to um, to increment the number of minutes. So, for example, here, this was minute zero, but when we went here, and here, and here, this is at minute one. And same thing when we went from one to five, this was at the next minute two. So we need to increment minute here. So that's all. That's what we need to do here. We need this to be minute plus one. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much, that should be it, except we need to add to our visited set. And so let's do that here. Um, and that should be it, so if I run. <coughs> um, looks like there is, yeah. Here we also need our base case. If there is no node, we should return, okay? So that this doesn't fail um, because the node is empty. Okay, looks good, let's submit, and that passes. Um, yeah, so pretty simple BFS application, you'll just need to convert to a graph first. Um, yeah, and this is, by the way, is a good technique to remember. If you have a data structure like a tree, for example, and the problem is difficult to solve with that data structure, you can convert it to another data structure like a graph and solve it if that makes it easier to solve. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one. Bye.